The Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event was the fifth and most recent mass extinction event in Earth's history. This extinction ended the dinosaur's 160 million year reign. However, a species that had persisted for 160 million years could not be completely wiped out by a single asteroid impact. Weeks after the collision, two highly resilient and famine resistant young Portosaurus emerged, searching for vegetation to fill their stomachs in the pitch black environment. Without sunlight, all vegetation had lost the ability to photosynthesize, leaving no possibility of survival. Thus, the juvenile Portosaurus were forced to abandon the cave that had saved them and venture out in search of a viable ecosystem. Scientists estimate that approximately 75% of all plant and animal species, both terrestrial and marine, were completely wiped out in this disaster. In this region, the survivors included not only Portosaurus, but also the predator Mate Macrothorax. With food resources now extremely scarce, these predators became even more aggressive in hunting any available prey. In this harsh environment, the Portosaurus had to travel up to 100 kilometers daily in search of food, enduring hunger while remaining constantly vigilant against predators. The Mape Macrothorax, belonging to the Tyrannosaur superfamily, were the apex predators of South America at the time. They often hunted in packs to take down adult Portosaurus, which weighed up to 55 tons. However, this particular Mape Macrothorax had become separated from its group. The starving young Portosaurus did not retreat. Instead, it reared up on its forelimbs, ready to fight with its last ounce of strength. As an apex predator, it possessed intelligence. Given the current situation, its 1.4-ton frame was no match for the juvenile giant before it. In the end, the weakened and isolated mite macrothorax had no choice but to abandon its potential meal, turning away in hunger and exhaustion. Starvation had left it severely debilitated. Its once sharp teeth and powerful limbs had lost their former strength. It could barely sustain basic life functions. As it wandered in search of prey, it could realistically overpower. Although the young Puertosaurus had narrowly escaped death this time, they still faced the threat of starvation. Most vegetation had been destroyed, but a few hardy plants managed to survive in this desolate land, offering the Portosaurus a glimmer of hope. Scientists gradually realized through analysis that certain regions might have been spared severe damage purely by chance, perhaps due to unique geographical features, such as mountains blocking shockwaves and firestorms, or simply being far enough from the impact site. For the starving and exhausted juvenile Portosaurus, such a refuge could mean their last hope for survival. About a month after the asteroid impact, the two young Portosaurus reached the limits of their physical and mental endurance. Just as they were on the verge of collapse, an endless expanse of green vegetation suddenly appeared before them. Having traveled from what is now Patagonia, they had by sheer luck arrived in a special region, Antarctica, untouched by the asteroid's devastation and now lush with life. Here they found temporary relief from hunger and extreme environmental threats. This green oasis also harbored other refugee dinosaurs, including Stegoros elangasin, measuring 1.8 to 2 meters in length and weighing about 100 kilograms and a seagull-sized raptor dinosaur covered in bird-like feathers, giving it a uniquely striking appearance. Though mischievous, this small predator posed no threat to Stegouros elangasin. Stegouros elangasin was an armored dinosaur, its body covered in tough scales, with a tail shaped like an Aztec macuahuitl, a saw-like weapon. Yet even in this sanctuary, dinosaurs followed the laws of nature. Predators hunted herbivores just as they had before the disaster. Stegouros elangasin relied on its Makawahuidal-like tail to fend off Antarctica's predator, Imperivator. These hunters reached lengths of up to four meters and were the apex predators of Antarctica's ecosystem. With numerical superiority, they dared to challenge any dinosaur. Even Stegouros elangasin, despite its bladed tail, was no match. When their defensive formation broke, Stegouros elangasin fled on short legs. The pursuing Imperivator suddenly halted, deciding to test its hunting limits. With furious roars, it redirected its attack toward the newly arrived Portosaurus, attempting to take on these multi-ton giants. However, such massive prey were not easy targets. A single misstep from the Portosaurus could crush the Imperivator into paste. But the Imperivator was cunning. Instead of attacking head-on, it used its agility to leap onto the Portosaurus's back, clinging with its claws while biting relentlessly. The Portosaurus, despite its size, couldn't shake off these nimble assailants. The frightened giant let out a desperate, mournful roar. At this critical moment, its mate delivered a powerful strike. Its massive tail swung like a cannon, sending the Imperobator flying. After this decisive counterattack, the predators finally fled in fear. Having endured countless hardships together, the two Portosaurus had forged a deep bond, 